What's our next move? I might have something for the election. The President of the United States may have gone AWOL from the military. This is your directorial debut. Yes. What was so appealing about this particular story? I've always been fascinated with journalism, and if I hadn't, you know, sort of gone into our silly business, I, I, I would have pursued a career in journalism. And this seemed to be such an interesting point in history of journalism, sort of the last of the voice of God anchors going down, and, and sort of how that happened, and sort of the rise of the internet was was sort of fascinating to me. I think I knew as much about the story as sort of, you know, the regular person on the street, which was CBS had run a story on George W. Bush's National Guard Service, and they'd run some memos on it that were fake, and Dan Rather got fired as a result. And when I read uh, Mary's book, which was originally sort of an article in Vanity Fair, I went, well, I mean, if half of this stuff is true, this is fascinating. Hey, Mary, these blogs are saying that the memos can be recreated in Microsoft Word. Several experts have raised serious questions. They're gonna start an investigation. And let's talk about the fabulous cast that you've assembled. Sure. How did Kate Blanchett and Robert Redford really embody these people? They did so much work. Kate would Skype with Mary for two hours a night just to sort of get the vocal intonations and the mannerisms. You know, I went to her and I said, look, people don't know Mary that well, so, you know, we'll, we can talk about your interpretation of it. She said, no, 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 I really wanna, I wanna get to know the real person. I wanna, cause that's, you know, the, I can build off of that. And Bob, you know, he's Robert Redford. So the first thing he goes, he goes, well, I know Dan. And I was like, of course you know Dan. I said to him, I don't, think it should be an impression. I think it should be a little touch here. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll gray your hair, but don't try and be him because I think that'll feel false. And he said, that's great. That's exactly my feeling on as, as well. And so that's what he did. And, um, you know, it was just more about who Dan is as a person and who Mary is as a person. And, and they brought that through, I think, spectacularly. The pace of this movie is very fast. Oh, one, good. No, I feel like one second we're in the newsroom, the next we're on a plane to New York. What oh, were good. you trying to achieve? with this type of pace and storytelling? Um, I think just the, the, to mirror what the characters are going through. You know, the idea of we have to put this on the air in five days, especially with something like 60 Minutes, you go, oh, well, they've had months to prepare this and, you know, this. when in point of fact, that's not, that's not the truth. That's not how, how this stuff works. And so I wanted people to kind of be in that, that exciting, you know, run up to it. And also the excitement of it. I mean, being on the trail is something that could be juicy and interesting and newsworthy. There's a, there's a pleasure in that. There's a pleasure in, there's sort of a detective story pleasure in being on the trail of something that I, I, I wanted the movie to kind of capture. Our story was about whether the president fulfilled his service. Nobody wants to talk about that. They want to talk about fonts and forgeries. And they hope to God the truth gets lost in the scrum. The reason the movie's called Truth is because it's the thing that everybody's trying to get to. Um, and it's elusive, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world to find. Um, and so that was sort of an exciting thing for me to sort of go, this is what everybody's searching for. Um, and whether they get there or not, I think is, is up to you. What we are talking about is you bringing your politics into your reporting. I did nothing of the kind. Where does politics not enter into this? 